Welcome to Discourse. I am Susil Pandey. Pakistan is going to celebrate its National Day tomorrow. Nepal and Pakistan have a long history of diplomatic relations. Both the countries share a number of similarities. So there are a number of aspects on which Nepal and Pakistan can work together. Bilateral trade, tourism, education and sports are the fields on which both the countries have been joining hands for long. Today I am going to talk on this regard with Ambassador of Pakistan to Nepal, His Excellency Mazhar Javed. He was a medical doctor before joining Foreign Service of Pakistan in 1989 and served many countries across the world as an ambassador so far. Excellency, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Mr. Sushil Pandey. The country is celebrating the National Day tomorrow. How are you celebrating here? Right. Before I answer, how are we celebrating? Let me put a personal note to that. That for any ambassador, it's an extremely great player to be celebrating his National Day in a country where people really like your country. And there's a very positive and a friendly sentiment between the two countries. That is where you really enjoy yeah. celebrating your National Day with the people of the host country. To celebrate our National Day, we'll be having a flag hoisting ceremony in the morning at our own embassy. And we are having a reception dinner in the evening. Yeah. That's the way you are celebrating. Yes, yeah. that is the way we do. Uh, Nepal and Pakistan have a long history of diplomatic relations. And what do you think? How can we reach such kind of bilateral relations in Chile? Right. right. Pakistan and Nepal relations have as you very correctly said, they have a very long history. Since the diplomatic ties were formally established in 1960, yeah. there has been a lot of progress in the bilateral relations. Today the two countries are having excellent cooperation in different fields, education, tourism, trade and economy, technical assistance, yeah. natural disasters. But of course there is always room to increase that cooperation. If you ask me in the larger picture, we need three things for the relations between any two countries to improve. One, we have to look at is there a scope for increasing the trade or increasing the relations. In case of Nepal and Pakistan, sky is the limit. In terms of areas, education is one area which we probably we will never be able to explore the entire space that is available. Yeah. Then both the countries have got similar opportunities in uh, terms of tourism. There is a huge potential in terms of religious tourism. Then there is uh, trade, then cultural relations. Then second question that one needs to ask is, are there any institutional mechanisms to actually propel these relations forward? In case of Nepal and Pakistan, we have got a joint economic commission, we have got a joint business council, mm -hmm. and then there are sectoral joint working groups. Then both the countries fall in the umbrella, uh, fall under the umbrella of SARC, which gives them additional impetus to the bilateral relations. Yeah. Over and above all, the biggest factor, the biggest factor that I would say is the positive friendly and warm sentiment of the two countries, of the two people. As a diplomat, one thing that I've learned is that one must never ever underestimate the strength of these relations. Yeah. If that sentiment exists, everything falls in line. All sectors, all mechanisms start working. Yeah. If that sentiment doesn't exist, nothing works. At the end of the day, it is the public to public friendly sentiment that is the main propeller of bilateral relations. If we're going to people to people relations, I'd like to ask one question since yes, you have told me about the education. So far as education is concerned, Pakistan is one of the best destinations for the medical students of Nepal. Yeah? Exactly. Pakistan has got one of the best opportunities that it offers to Nepali doctors, both at undergraduate level and at the postgraduate level. Yeah. And I'm working with utmost focus yeah. to increase this cooperation 
as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And again, here, it's, it's, the sky is the only limit that we can touch. I would like to put questions regarding yourself also, because you are also an ambiguous doctor, a medical doctor, and uh, practicing medicine for some time and entering for, for, for uh, service. Do you have any Nepali friends while you are uh, pursuing a medical doctor? A very interesting question. Yes, we had Nepali friends among our class fellows. Yeah. And that, still I remember how strong that friendship is when you sit with your foreigner friends, Nepalis, on the same uh, classroom benches. That is the kind of alumni fraternity that I want to build between the two countries. Yeah. And I for very fondly remember them. And I'm sure they must be remembering me at least remembering if not fondly remembering. Then mm -hmm. what about the people to people relationship between two countries or how can we enhance this kind of relationship? Right, people to people relations, first of all we have to realize the importance of these relations. They are so important that the government to government relations can never build up until and unless there are people to people relations. We in Pakistan fully realize the importance of building up stronger people-to-people -people contact between the two countries, particularly when we have so many of cultural similarities. To promote this education and alumni strength that I just mentioned, that is one very strong avenue. Mm -hmm. So we would want as many pa Nepali students to come to Pakistan as possible. Yeah. There are already many. But again, especially in medical, in, in particular in uh, in the field of medicine, medicine, and more specifically in higher medical education. Mm -hmm. Then there are uh, the tourist attractions, mm -hmm. right? Some of the most important Buddhist and Hindu important sites are located in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. We would want that religious tourism to be promoted to Pakistan. Right. Then there are mountaineering uh, associations that can work miracles mm -hmm. in terms of bringing uh, uh, tourists from one to another country. In Pakistan we are also actively pursuing the issue of resumption of direct flights to, uh, to Nepal. Because once there are direct flights, it promotes and facilitates everything whether it's cooperation in education, mm -hmm. tourism, trade, you name it and its basis lies in connectivity. Mm -hmm. So we are very actively working to resume those flights. Mm -hmm. Let me know one thing that what are the common interests and common threats between Nepal and Pakistan because Nepal and Pakistan are almost the same in terms of geography, in terms of people, though the language is different but we can understand on another's language Absolutely. is similar to the culture is almost similar because Geography or geographical varieties are almost the same. They are, Pakistan has also mountain, Nepal has also mountain. Yeah? Then what are the common interests and common trade between Nepal, Nepal and Pakistan? What do you think? Right. In terms of common interests and threats, they are based on exactly the commonalities that you have counted. It's the same culture similar geography, mm -hmm. similar issues, language, whatever. If we look at the common threats that affect our region, I would count them poverty, poverty. illiteracy, mm -hmm. low human development index. Yes. Then the, since we share similar geographies, we sh also share similar threats as far as climate change is concerned. Yeah. Environmental issues. Mm -hmm and most importantly, disaster management. Mm -hmm. Because both our countries have undergone through painful experiences of national, uh, natural disasters. Yeah. So we would, these are the areas that are common threats for us. Mm -hmm. And combating and eliminating these threats is our common interest. Mm -hmm. So we could cooperate in education, mm -hmm. we could cooperate in economy, we could cooperate in trade, we could cooperate in disaster management, and uh, mitigating the effects of climate change. Mm -hmm. These are the important areas in which... For that reason, we should join high together. Absolutely. And share each other's experiences and uh, expertise. What do you think? What are those areas or any other areas 
on which both the countries Nepal and Pakistan can work together. Areas in addition to education, tourism, trade, economy, natural disaster management, mm -hmm. to that list one could count sports, mitigating the effects of climate change, mm -hmm. cultural cooperation, yeah. cultural, exchange also. cultural exchanges, mm -hmm. the, the cooperation between the media institutions in, yeah. uh, in the two mm -hmm. countries because both the countries have got a flourishing uh, mm -hmm. media, mm -hmm. flourishing and free media. So these are the areas in which one could media exchange. That media attracts, exchange that attracts me. Your attention. <laughs> I could can, understand how can, that. How can we co cooperate uh, to to enhance the media sector between two countries? Right. If there are frequent exchanges between the media houses of the two countries, then the journalists get together. They get to know each other, mm -hmm. and then they can plan their own areas of cooperation or prepare what you could call a roadmap for their cooperation. Mm -hmm. But basically news exchange, training programs, exchanges, that is what uh, developed the relation between the two media. Mm -hmm. And uh, the space for flourishing rela media relations between these two countries, mm -hmm. I see a lot of scope to increase them. Mm -hmm. What about the media development in Pakistan itself? Media? Development. Media development. Pakistan has had what they call a silent revolution over the last 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. If I can recount, in 2001, we had one state tele state owned television channel. Yeah. Now there are more, more than 80, 80 private, more than 80. 80 private private TV radio channel. and uh, private TV channels, oh. which are televising their uh, broadcasts 24/7. They are independent, they are free, and they are uh, flourishing. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we have got dozens of new newspapers, which again print media like electronic, it's free. Mm -hmm. Then we have got uh, hundreds of radio stations. Yeah. So media revolution has really changed Pakistan society. Mm -hmm. The number of media. The number of media. And this growth of media, it was a growth which was in tandem with the growth in demo democratic structures and systems. Mm -hmm. It was in parallel with a growth of a very strong civil society. So all these things have really created a new society mm -hmm. which is more mature, more open mm -hmm. and more democratic. Mm -hmm. And I see similar changes in Nepal too. Yeah. And that's very promising. In Nepal, media has been developed so much in number Maybe there may be some questions regarding the quantity, quality of the media. Okay, <laughs> so, but numbers are being increased day by day. Questions about Nepal, uh, questions about quality, quality always show a process of evolution. Oh. If there are no questions, hands, there's no evolution. Nepal and Pakistan can join hands to improve media also. Yeah? Exactly, mm -hmm. absolutely. Then let's talk about the uh, regional cooperation, for example, SARC. Okay. What do you think can Shark work to bring all nations at the same point and enhance for what? Shark, it represents different countries which collectively account for more than well over a quarter of the world population. Mm -hmm. It is one of the least integrated regions in the world. Mm -hmm. And it contains uh, one of the largest chunk of poverty, people living below mm -hmm. poverty line. Mm -hmm. And requires a lot of uh, development, prosperity to bring people, uh, to raise the human development index. Yeah. These issues can be addressed only through regional cooperation, mm -hmm. regional integration. SAR is a useful mechanism, it provides a useful mechanism for that uh, integration in different co areas, whether it's education, it is connectivity, it's uh, ro roads, railways, whether it's trade economy. Mm -hmm. So SAR can pro provide a very useful umbrella or a mechanism to promote the much, much needed uh, regional cooperation in this region. But some critics criticize that SARP is not able to perform its role 
to strengthen the relationship between or among the South countries as it is expected. What do you think? Right, that, um, that means that uh, we require more efforts yeah. and more harmony, mm -hmm. more political will. Yeah. Once we have political will, an impetus and an urge to work in tandem for the regional development with putting focus on regional integration, I think all issues will be resolved. Mm -hmm. Then we need political will, cooperation and all the strategy. Absolutely. To cooperate among South countries. Absolutely. And the, the realization of the importance of regional integration for development non prosperity. Mm -hmm. Then what do you think, what are the obstacles that hamper to achieve such kind of political will, cooperation or, or effort for the SARC? Well, in, uh, it's not really obstacles. Mm -hmm. It's the need to push for, forward the process. Mm -hmm. And we can push, for, push it forward by realizing the importance of this regional cooperation, the urge and putting focus on human development, mm -hmm. on alleviating poverty, bringing more education, having a better quality of life mm -hmm. through interconnectivity, depending and building interlinkages. Yeah. And once that is there, the political will and the impetus would come. We have recently had our Council of Ministers meeting, mm -hmm. and uh, we discussed all different different issues. Mm -hmm. So we need to push the process forward mm -hmm. with in an environment of cooperation, in an environment of mutual trust, yeah. in an environment of mutual confidence, mm -hmm. mutual respect and spirit of cooperation. Mm -hmm. That is important. That are important. Yeah, I agree with you. Thank you. But some critics say that the SARC cannot achieve such kind of goals. Some critics criticize it. It means we need extra effort. Absolutely. Absolutely. To create that congenial environment. Mm. Do you want to say something to Nepali people? Now, Nepal has just promulgated a new constitution and uh, it wants to go forward in terms of development, in terms of political stability, and in terms of having very strong relationship with its neighbor countries, new relationship. Okay. Do you want to say something to Nepali people, Nepali leaders, as an ambassador of a very good friend, Pakistan? First of all, my message to the Nepalese people is that of uh, wishing uh, them a very happy Holi. Yeah, we are celebrating, are celebrating. today. Mm. And um, while coming to the studio, I could see lots of colorful celebrations and people enjoying. <laughs> so, very hearty, happy Holi. Mm -hmm. As for the developments in Nepal, mm -hmm. both the countries also share an experience of a more democratic and a more pluralistic society over the last Mm -hmm. a couple of years. Mm -hmm. We wish all the best to the Nepalese leadership and to the people and for a very prosperous, mm -hmm. developing progress of the people and the country. Mm -hmm. They have all our good wishes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. And, uh, we are now at the end of the program. I'd like to ask the one uh, very uh, personal question to you. I've already asked you. Uh, you are a medical doctor and joined uh, foreign service and I'd like to ask one question. Which one is very um, interesting for you? I think my present profession is a lot more interesting. Personally, I like... Be being ambassador, is it? Exactly. Exactly. It gives me a lot more world view. Mm -hmm. You get to see different people and interact with different people mm -hmm. and then develop friendships. Yeah. In Nepal, med medical doctor is also a prestigious job and government service. Some people think that that is less prestigious than being a doctor or engineer in Nepal. What about Pakistan? I, I just want to <laughs> ask you. In Pakistan, they are both equally prestigious. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it depends on uh, how well you perform. Yeah. If you can excel in any field, mm -hmm. you earn respect for yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your Excellency, I'd like to congratulate you and the people of Pakistan for the National Day. Thank you so much. And I'd like to give you many, many thanks for giving us time and considerations 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Fushman.